morning lovelies. Today we're going to talk about my top 10 favorite medieval fantasy tropes. Now what is medieval fantasy? Medieval fantasy is a version of high fantasy that is fantasy that takes place on another totally made up world and it specifically bases the setting on medieval Europe. It is frankly what most people think of when they hear fantasy novel or fantasy story. This is not to be confused with historical fiction that takes place in actual medieval Europe. Writers of medieval fantasy simply use that time period as an inspiration, a launching off point for which to create their own thing. And some people think that medieval fantasy should or should not be a certain way because of historical accuracy, which makes no sense because it is a fantasy story that takes place in a world that does not exist and therefore doesn't have human earth history. That I'm going to save the rest of that speech for my least favorite medieval fantasy tropes. But for now we're going to stay positive, so let's look at my favorite medieval fantasy tropes. Number one, swords. Magic swords, sentient swords, even just regular swords. Swords are cool, I don't know what else you want from me. They're also really hard to master, and I speak from personal experience. I did seven years of American Youth Self-Defense Program and Chinese Wushu. Whacked myself in the face a lot with that aluminum sword. Archery came a little easier for me, so I'm given medieval fantasy archers brownie points. Number two, magic systems. A magic system is the rules upon which magic is used in any given story. Some stories have multiple magic systems, like how Game of Thrones has both the wargs and whatever fiery nonsense Melisandre can do. Magic is literally half the reason that I read fantasy at all, and in medieval fantasy especially, which is extremely saturated and overflowing with token lookalikes, I'm looking for particularly unique or interesting magic systems. Number three, the slow power crawl. Power crawl is basically the journey that the hero goes on to master a skill or otherwise become more powerful. I don't think any of us like those stories where the hero just like snaps their fingers and automatically becomes master of all of the magic that took their mentor decades to figure out like that. Lame. Power crawls are really great opportunities for character growth and development. Most power crawls happen over the course of the entire story. The longer the crawl, the more satisfying it is for when the hero finally gets it right. Number four, gods and deities. Religion as general is just fascinating to me. I love seeing these fantasy religions and how they affect the world that they're in. With medieval fantasy, they're usually on par with Catholicism and the Pope, so they're also a major political influence on this world, and that causes a lot of cool like world building and conflict and like character dynamics. And you know, bonus, in a fantasy world, half the time the gods are actually real, so that's like a whole other level of like, oh shoot, like, wh what do we do if we don't, you know, do our sacrifices right, or if, we, or if we don't do our prayers right. Number five, the fantasy party, aka the friend group. I love the power of friendship, and anyone who says that that's lame or childish can fight me. Every story has an emotional center, the relationships that the characters have with each other. Sometimes it's romantic, which is fine. Family is better, but friendships just Found family is one of my favorite tropes of all time, so. The fantasy party is especially effective because they're not just random. No, they're coming together for a specific purpose. They have a goal. There's a quest or goal or some sort of objective and we get to see them struggle and then finally succeed in doing it. It's kind of like the collective version of the slow power crawl. Number six, princesses and queens. It's women in power and I am a feminist bitch. Except, you know, because it's based on medieval Europe, which was pretty sexist at the time. Kings and princes had comparatively much more power than their female counterparts. In fact, they often had power over those women, able to control them, order them around, marry them off, execute them. But a lot of medieval women could circumvent that by creating intricate spy networks, or placing puppet kings on the throne, or straight up murdering their way to power. I mean, basically these characters of princesses and queens are navigating this deadly maze with the odds stacked against them, and that's an underdog story in a nutshell. Number seven, the Dark Lord. Now, I admit that this one can suck if executed poorly. Same with every other trope on this list. But I do like seeing a Dark Lord in fantasy stories, and I will tell you why. First of all, not every villain has to be sympathetic or be the hero of their own story. Some people are just 
assholes. That's what the Dark Lord is. They are pure evil, unapologetic, usually very charismatic, and just reveling in their evil. I admire the confidence. Number two, Dark Lords and the evil that they bring to their world create some very interesting developments around them. They have a really unique impact, namely in their minions. Some of their minions might genuinely think that they're making the world a better place. Some minions don't care about the effect they have on the world, they're just here to get paid. Some third party is happy to team up with the Dark Lord because they have their own agenda going on. I mean, just, just some really cool character dynamics dynamics and conflicts that can go into that. And third, sometimes it just really is as simple as good versus evil. I mean, gray existential questions about the nature of humanity and morality are, are all well and good, and I do like wading into those discussions from time to time. But sometimes life is a lot simpler than we make it out to be. Sometimes it really is just a matter of this person or this group of people are committing absolutely atrocious evil acts and we have to stop them. That's it. Number eight, medieval times, but not medieval Europe. Because Europe was not the only continent that had a medieval period. Asia, the Middle East, and several African cultures also went through something similar. Native Americans probably too, although I don't know for sure because I don't know that history as well as I should. I am sorry. Now, us white people have been taught that the world centers around us and that nowhere else has a particular history or even contributed much to global progress at all, which is bullshit. And that attitude is reflected in genre fiction. Diving into a medieval fantasy story that doesn't see hide nor hair of whiteness or white culture at all, it's a nice little refresher for me personally. Also, the world building is just so unique and unusual compared to what I'm used to, and it's just amazing and I love seeing it. Number nine, dragons. Dragons have kind of fallen out of fashion recently, and I understand why, but it still makes me sad. We've done a lot of dragons in a variety of different ways, so I can see how a fantasy author would look at that huge library and just think, ah, I'm not gonna include dragons in my book. I've got nothing new to contribute. And I'm including myself in that too. Of all the works in progress that I currently have going on, none of them include dragons. But I still love to see them, either as powerful teachers, or basically a dog, or traditional villains. Dragons are just cool. I really need to find a way to write them in my stories. And number 10, paragons and other heroes that are actually heroic. Because I want a main character that I can actually root for and not feel slimy about. Yes, obviously they should have their flaws, and they do. Stubbornness is the most common flaw among paragons, and it does a lot of damage. But I want heroes to see the injustice around them and fight it because it's the right thing to do. Heroes who are selfless and who care about other people. Heroes who don't give up when everything is on fire and it looks absolutely hopeless. We need more of that in the world. Those are my favorite medieval fantasy tropes. Tell me yours in the comments below and be sure to check out my tropes playlist for more. I will see you next time. Bye lovelies.